Hello and welcome to today's Zoo to You. We are inside our tropical forest building today with our two tapers who are right behind me and their keeper, Kirsten, who has some enrichment that she is going to give them. So we have some beautiful ficus brows here that we grow right here in this building. And she is going to launch it in there. Beautiful throw. And it looks like Abby, our mom, is standing up, moving around a little, maybe thinking about coming over. <laughs> These guys were enjoying a lovely little nap when we came over. Uh, it's pretty common for them this time of day. Out in nature, they are what we call crepuscular, which means they're active early in the morning and kind of early in the evening, so dusk and dawn. Um, some species are more nocturnal, so they're going to be more active during the nighttime. But these guys live in Central and South America. So if you live there and it's really warm for most of the year, it's pretty smart to spend that really hot part of the day just sleeping and not using too much energy. So when it's a little bit cooler in the evenings or in the morning or at night, that's when they'll be kind of moving around. <laughs> So if you have never seen a taper before, <laughs> you might be thinking, what on earth is this animal? <laughs> so these guys are kind of related to pigs, kind of related to rhinos loosely, but they are pretty unique. So there are four different types of taper. There are three different types that live in Central and South America. And then there's one type, the Malayan taper that lives all the way over in Southeast Asia. But these guys are Baird's tapers. So they are from Central and South America, mostly in kind of like rainforest habitats. And here they're showing off their snouts really well. So they use those noses. They're what we call a prehensile nose um, or a grasping nose. So almost like an elephant. It's kind of like a trunk. They can use it Abby's going to show off to strip some leaves off of trees and Millie's going to get in there too. And they can use it to smell really well. And they do spend some time in the water, which is why we have a pool here for them. And when they're in the water, sometimes they'll use that nose almost like a snorkel. So they'll stick it above the water and use it to smell a little bit. <laughs> so when they stand right next to each other, it's a little easier to tell them apart. Abby is our mom. She's a little bit bigger and she is about 18 years old. And then her son or her daughter, Millie, was born almost a year ago. So her birthday is going to be at the end of this month. She'll be a year old. And she's, you can kind of see, still got a little bit more growing to do. <laughs> but she's definitely starting to mature. She has her full adult coloration. Um, so when they're born, if you saw her, maybe a couple months ago or maybe almost a year ago and she was really young. She, people say kind of looks like a watermelon. So I think it's almost like a baby deer. It's kind of that lighter brown with the light spots um, and that helps them with camouflage. So when they're really little, they can't really defend themselves as well as maybe a full grown taper like Miss Abby here can. So instead they'll kind of camouflage, they'll blend in really, really well with the ground and maybe some plants around them so that they can hide from any predators that may want to eat them. <laughs> so it looks like our, our ficus branch landed a little bit in the water, but that's okay. It just means they get this kind of extra enrichment of having to reach for it and really have to work for that special treat. So whenever we give uh, our animals enrichment. We always want it to be almost like a little challenge or like a game for them or a special treat. So especially in the summer months, you may have seen some ice treats on really hot days. So it's a little warm out today. So that's what's making me think of it. So we'll freeze maybe some, some food or like an extra special food that they don't get every day. We'll freeze it in some ice so that they have to work to get that treat out of the ice and it helps cool them down at the same time. <laughs> so here, uh, <laughs> Abby's really showing off those teeth. 
So they'll do that sometimes. They'll kind of stick their nose up into the air, show off those teeth. And that's kind of her smelling everything that's around her. So they'll do that to try and find food, maybe try and find other tapers, just explore the environment around them. Do they vocalize to each other? So these guys don't really make too many noises to each other. They tend to be pretty quiet. Um, you might hear maybe like some soft kind of grunting vocalizations, but other than that, they kind of just stay pretty quiet. They mostly communicate like by bumping into each other like Abby just did. Yeah, they're one of our, our quieter animals, unlike maybe some of our cranes that you hear all the time. <laughs> So that's a really good question. She will probably stay for us for a little bit longer, at least while she finishes growing up. And then it really depends on their species survival plan. So if you've ever watched one of our Facebook Lives before, or maybe even just visited the zoo, you may have heard of our species survival plans. We talk about them all the time. So that's where we match up a male and a female. And so they can be a breeding pair and they can have offspring. So Millie here, she's the result of one of those SSPs. So she likely will become part of that kind of SSP, that program, and she'll get matched with a male um, at another zoo. So depending on that zoo that that male is from and our zoo, what that looks like at the time, they'll make the decision whether she goes there or the male comes here. So it's kind of like this whole big dating game almost. So she'll be with us for now, but who knows? <laughs> We're getting a bunch of comments about how big she's gotten since people have last seen her. I know, she was teeny, teeny tiny when she was first born. Um, so she uh, was actually a twin. Um, unfortunately, her brother, her twin brother passed away pretty soon after he was born. Um, but twins were unheard of in tapers. It had never been documented before. So we were expecting that, you know, one or both of them may not make it. But because she was a twin, she was born about half the size of a normal baby taper. So she started out really teeny tiny. And now she's, you know, on the right growth track. So we're really glad that, you know, she was healthy. She's been able to grow really well. And she's been really uh, great with training too. So she's participating in different kind of trainings and behind the scenes encounters. Uh, so we had our zoo campers. They were able to feed both Millie and Abby, which was really cool. Um, and she also will get onto her scale so that her keepers can weigh her, which is a really important part of tracking that growth and keeping uh, an eye on her weight in case any, any health concerns come up with that. <laughs> Oh, that is a great question. I think about maybe a year and a half or two years, that's when they'll be kind of fully grown, pretty mature. Um, at that time, they'd probably go off on their own. I think we're all ready to wrap up, but the last thing we'll mention is where can people find our teachers if they're visiting the zoo? Yes, so they are on their indoor exhibit today. So these guys are lucky. They get two exhibits all to themselves. So they have this inside one, um, which is kind of towards the back end of our tropical forest building. Um, but sometimes they're outside and they are kind of in the, in the back. So if you go out the tropical forest building exit and you take a left and you go a little bit around the building, you'll find them outside. <laughs> they're just showing off those teeth again. Well, thank you guys for watching them get some enrichment today. I'm glad they came over and put on a little show for you. <laughs>